Hello, this is Larry again, and we are going to be going through the design web system in detail on page one. So I wanted you to see, this is page one, and I'm in advanced mode. And advanced mode, you could tell, would be right here in the first setup box. And if you're in simple mode, you would not have the uh, occupancy uh, options in your but anyway this is advanced mode and I want to go ahead and start making a design here and give the project a name means anything it could be your customers name it could be uh, one two three it could be anything to where you could reference it back to uh, what is meaningful to you and how that works is if you went to past quotes your name would be right here to where these people's like whoever these people are and that would be the name of how you retrieve your your uh, quote. Um, so let's go down here and it starts off with uh, the regular uh, zip codes of the United States. Um, so let's say we give it the, the name here and let's say here I, I live in zip code uh, 80903 and you could either put that in if you're exporting to Alaska you would use an Alaska US zip code. If you're exporting to Canada you would put in the um, the numbers and letters of your postal code and then you'd have to put in the providence and the corresponding city that would come up for, available for those providences and the rest of them here export to the Caribbean east and west coast is simply uh, a pre-chosen zip code to a port um, so we would deliver to the port and then you could have a, a standard design so let's go ahead and put in the US zip code and now a bunch of options and right now currently we have a, a simple building with no post in it and so this is just your basic uh, clear span building and on every building they have a, it, their own limitations like on a clear span I think we only do up to 80 feet wide which should be this width here of the frame um, and I don't remember how long but every li every building will have a limit and I'll show you how to find the limit there and then the next one has a post in the middle so you only have one post directly in the middle and if it's in our office we could obviously put the post anywhere we want but on the online system it's it's just in the middle if you have one post and then this is two posts and I think that this option goes up to like I forgot exactly but 180 to 200 wide by maybe 400 long so I mean you could have a huge building if you allow two posts in it a single slope and this simply means that there it's not symmetrical like this one up and back and so you'll only have one slope on it and this would be great for uh, a lean-to uh, in later on in the program you could take this wall uh, girt and panel off and you could join it to another building um, but I think that this only goes up to 80 foot wide in our system too and, and the reason why we do that is because usually when it gets wider um, it throws a lot of errors so there's not a point in having the system do it to where it just throws errors and frustrates people uh, the same thing here where you have a single slope and then uh, one post and two posts where you could have a huge one and this is unsymmetrical gable and this is basically just to play with um, and have a, a, a unique look building a unique looking building and so what it is is you would call out the first slope like let's say if you're doing a 50 wide and you want the first slope to be 15 then it would make a notch uh, up to 15 of whatever slope you want and then go back to your next height um, so anyway it's fun to play with and this is an inset bay meaning that uh, the whole area of the first bay is open meaning the wall is pushed back to the next frame and this has all kinds of useful purposes but uh, just so you know when you run these buildings more often than not this one uh, eave strut member right here is usually going to fail because it's going to overstress or over deflect what is allowable uh, but basically that's an error that typically will be um, ignored when it goes to engineering because there's um, no reason uh, for it to uh, have a problem it's just that it, it, it would over deflect because there's not a, a vertical panel attached to the bottom of it and then these are hangers all the bottom row is you can see here that this is a bifold um, a regular bifold with one door in the end and how we do these are let's say if you had a 50 foot wide building 
But let's go ahead and choose a hanger and I'll show you how that works. You notice how there's a part that pops up in the bottom that's uh, uh, data provided by Swice only because they are the ones that gave us the data. Um, and let's say if you had a 50 foot wide building, uh, let's go 50 right here and let's go, let's go 50 here and then let's say 17 on a 1 in 12. Um, and what this means is, is that, okay, I'm 50 wide, it's only going to allow us 45. Meaning that, you see how the frame has a taper in it right here? And we need the area for it to be within the frame's taper and also for it to be clear all the way through your building. So that's why we don't have it closer to the corner. Um, and these are all preset. So if I came in here and I said I wanted 60 wide, uh, then this should allow uh, 54 or whatever we think is the uh, the amount preset for for that particular situation. So let's say, okay, we got 70 wide on 80, meaning that we're asking for five feet, which is a bit much, but it's safe for a hanger. Um, so let's go ahead and do, let's go back to 50 here and 45. Now the same thing here where it's only going to give you 13 on a 17 uh, door. And the reason for that is, is that the wedge on a 45 foot door is three feet, meaning that, okay, 13 uh, plus three plus one for trim is exactly 17. And that's why we do that. So let's say if we come up here and go 19, now I can go 45 by 15 on my door. And it's the same thing to where, okay, I've got the, the 15, the three and the one for trim and you're good to go. And then the down here at the slope, and by, and by the way, you could make this uh, 19 foot two inches if you like, and if it's if it's if it helps you. Uh, but it's not going to bump into the next category. It's just that you can go decimals, you can do inches uh, and feet, you can do uh, whatever you need in the field, and hopefully uh, our system would be able to read it. And and we probably could. So and let's go to the slope here, and so. Let's read this. It says, uh, what is the roof pitch? Increased in height for every 12 feet. Meaning that, okay, if we have, let me draw here. If I go, let's say 12 flat and then one up, that's a one in 12. And typically, just so you know, hangers are always pretty much 1 in 12 unless you're in a uh, really um, like a high snow load area and, and, and it's not that the slope is going to depend or even matter in relation to snow load it's just that a 2 in 12 works better in, um, in snow load areas where you have the uh, the runoff and so all you have to do next is just click next and then it will go to the loads and code screen and that's it for the, um, the first page. Oh, one more thing is let's say if we did a single slope and let's say we did a, a 45 by 54 and then you notice that it's going to want the left eave height or the one over here on the height of the building on the, on the single slope on the left side so if you if you let's say you did 12 here and then a 1 in 12 what is that angle that top area and we already figured it out for you <clears throat> so let's say if we go 12 here and then on a 1 in 12 it's going to be 15.75 on the high end meaning that okay on that width you got 12 and then you got 15.75 right here at the length of the high wall. Uh, so if you're joining buildings or whatever you're doing, it's handy to know the uh, math of the high side. Um, and let's say if we go a 2 and 12, now we're all of a sudden at 19.5 feet. Um, so that's it for page one, and uh, see you on the next one.